Good morning and welcome to worship. Today is a very special day at Asbury United Methodist Church. We're going to have two baptisms and uh, it's going to be at 10 o'clock. So if you can make it to the church building at 2200 Lake Lansing Road, uh, it's going to be a holy and special time. See, baptism is, is many things. It's, a, it's an initiation into the community. It's a, it's a symbolic representation of uh, participation with Jesus Christ. Uh, birth and death, his death and resurrection, but most importantly, baptism is a means of grace. It's a way that we feel, we experience God's love and unconditional forgiveness in the moment firsthand. So uh, would you pray with me the prayer for illumination, and then we'll read scripture, and we will go on to our message. All right, pray with me, please. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The scripture today is from the book of Luke, beginning in chapter 3, and I'm going to be starting in verse uh, 15. So Luke 3, 15. The people were waiting expectantly, and they were, all were wondering in their hearts if John, John the Baptist, might, be, might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And then skipping down to verses 21 and 22, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. My friends, you and I are a part of the new creation. Now Jesus, of course, was the first fruit of this new creation. The new creation is something that is ongoing. It's something that was initiated by Jesus and continues moment by moment. Everything is being made new all the time. Paul, in the second letter to the Corinthians, said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. It, see, you see, it wasn't just a one-time thing. It's an ongoing thing until all things are made new. So today we begin again all of our journeys into being part of the new creation by being the adopted children of God. We're going to have two baptisms. And I mentioned that, and it's going to be a joy. And throughout this message, I may refer to the two beautiful young ones that are going to be baptized, Ivy and Aspen, um, but it doesn't just apply to them. It applies to all of us because whether we're baptized or not, um, Jesus continues to make all things new. As I said, baptism is many things. It's a means of grace. It's a public declaration of, of intent. It's uh, an initiation to the community of believers, and it's symbolic of, of Jesus' death and resurrection and our participation in that. So therefore, if anyone, anyone, is in Christ. He is a new create, new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Aspen and Ivy are blessed to have parents that are committed to nurturing them and, and blessing them in the name of Jesus. I want you to take a moment. And I want you to meditate on the details of your own baptism. When were you baptized? Was it before you were uh, aware of it when you were a baby or was it later in life? Where was your baptism? Who was there? Maybe you don't have any memories of that, and, and maybe there's no one around that does have any memories of that, but you know what? How many baptisms have you been, been to? How many memories that could you share with someone to tell them the story of their baptism? How much would a, that be a blessing to them? You see, I have this tradition on my children's birthday. I try to tell them in detail the, the circumstances of either their birth or their baptism just to give them their own story. Well, Jesus, Jesus was fully aware when he was baptized. He was 30 when he was baptized. 
Now, I've never been to Israel, to the place where Jesus was baptized. I've never been to the Jordan River. But what do you think it was like on that day when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist? John the Baptist had been preaching and warning people uh, about the way they were living. John the Baptist was a catalyst for a, a moral revival of that time. People were hungry for justice and righteousness. I just wonder, if can you uh, imagine a, a time like this? Can you imagine uh, an environment like this? Can you imagine something happening where an entire nation is motivated to cry out for justice? Can you imagine anything like that? It was a time like that when Jesus decided to begin his ministry or, or felt like God was prompting him to, to move forward and be about the Father's business. So Jesus went to be baptized by John in the Jordan, and John the Baptist prepared the way for Jesus, right? We know that from our Christmas stories. That was John the Baptist's job. He, he made all those places level and, and, place and crooked ways straight so that people would be, pre be prepared for Jesus' message. John the Baptist prepared a holy expectancy amongst the people, and then Jesus came on the scene. Jesus was in the midst of this expectation and had his readiness to do what had to be done, consecrated in that moment at the river when he was 30 years old. He's saying, now is the time. Now, after Jesus was baptized, he prayed, which is not unusual. Jesus often prayed, but... Um, we don't know what he prayed. It doesn't say in Scripture. But based on what, what his later ministry was like, we can guess, perhaps accurately, that he prayed for these three things. First, that he prayed for companionship with God because he and God were always at one. They, they were of one essence, one accord all the time. Number two, we can assume that... that uh, he prayed for illumination, that the way would be lighted for Jesus, that Jesus would always know the next step that he had to take. And then third, we, assume, we can assume that he prayed for power because he certainly had that. And the scripture said that while he was praying, the Holy Spirit descended and landed on him in the form of a dove. It is presumed that the people saw this dove, that they could see this, this dove descending, but it isn't the, that the people were able to witness this miracle of the Holy Spirit that's significant. No, the, the significant mo part of this scripture is because this was the moment that Jesus' consciousness was transformed. He went from, from being virtually anonymous to a, a revolutionary leader in a, in a mere moment. When the baptism was done, the voice of God was heard saying, Jesus, you are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. So just let me say today, as we baptize Aspen and Ivy, Aspen, you are God's dearly loved daughter, and you bring God great joy. Ivy, you are God's dearly loved daughter, and you bring God great joy. And the rest of you, you can fill in your names. Say your name out loud. You are God's dearly loved child, and you bring God great joy. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature. creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. In Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 15, it says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to fear. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Friends, when we receive God's Spirit, we are given illumination and power and companionship. As God's children, we are called to do the work that Jesus started. As God's children, we bring God great joy. You are a child of God. You are noticed. Your heart matters. Your Father in heaven adores you. And we, like John the Baptist, baptize with water. John the Baptist said that Jesus would baptize with Holy Spirit and, and with fire. We will receive all that we need to accomplish what God has set before us. 
The thing is, though, as we know, life is hard. And we get dealt with defeats all the time. And it may not feel like we have power. It may not feel like we have illumination or the ability to, to commune with God, but we do. At the height of Jesus' popularity, he was arrested and tortured and executed, and that seemed like a defeat, right? But we who know the whole story know that, the, that Jesus' ultimate miracle came next. He lifted himself up out of death and lives forever. Jesus brings victory out of defeat. Jesus brings life out of death. And so in baptism, we lay down all that is temporary and all that is a distraction. In baptism, we take on that which is eternal. That is Jesus living in us and Jesus living through us. May you who bear the name of Jesus live with confidence knowing that our God who adopted you will bring victory out of every defeat. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you so much for our baptism. Today we renew our commitment to allow you to live in and through us. And it's in Jesus' holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. My friends, thank you so much for being with us today. And God bless.